Today I'm going to run through analysis of a malicious binary that I downloaded from Malware Bazaar. And up until quite recently, so within the last 24 hours or so, this had no real indication of what malware it was, uh, but has now been categorized as Agent Tesla. So let's take a look at kind of the obfuscation and the protections involved in this binary that led to it not being identified straight away. So I've got my particular sample here and it is a RAR file that has been uploaded. So I've gone ahead and installed WinRAR. So I'm gonna extract the files and we're just gonna dump them on disk. Now from here, I wanna take a look at what this actual binary is. We can see that it is posing as a PDF document with the icon and it has a .exe extension. Now it has the description Finti with the company name of Caprone, a version of 7.7.7.0. .7 .7 .0. Yeah, let's take a look at what it is with Detected Easy. So we can see it is packed using UPX. We should be able to unpack that quite simply. And it seems to be an auto it based binary as well. So I'm just gonna open up a command prompt and we're gonna do UPX. And we're gonna do attack D and see if this works. See if it uh, has any kind of modifications to the UPX packing that's gonna make this fail. And it doesn't, it looked like it worked straight away. So we now have an unpacked UPX binary on disk that we can begin to get a bit more information about. So let's look at it with Detected Easy. And you can see now it says that it is auto it binary and it doesn't say that it is packed with UPX anymore. So because it's an auto it binary, I'm gonna use a tool called auto it extractor. And what I'm gonna do is locate the binary in question and we get a bit more information now. So there are particular resources that are noted within this binary. There is the no CMD execute. And the interesting thing about this is that it actually gives a bit more context on the machine that created this particular auto it binary. So if we look, we've got C users administrator, auto it v3, and the temp file that was essentially compiled into this executable. There is the auto it script as well same kind of information but if we go down to ageless and we go to brawlless now we can see a little bit more interesting components so on the d drive there is zamp there is ht docs and a bit more information tied to that okay so we do have a creation date time of a couple of days ago as well february the 18th and we have some resources that we could probably dump from this particular auto it binary it does look like this script is what we have that's going to essentially run and no execute doesn't seem to have anything in it. All right, so what we can do is we can save these particular resources for further analysis. This one we could just call script. This one we might call ageless. And this one we might call brawless. So we do have kind of all of this, uh, I don't even know exactly what it is in terms of auto it. We do have a bin file and we do have the script here. So this is essentially what's going to be run as soon as the particular executable is executed. But I wanna get a bit more of a high level idea of what it's doing using PE Studio. So let's take a look at it and just get a bit more of an idea of maybe the capability of this particular binary. So it does have this original internal name during development of Flex Usely. Flex I can't pronounce it, whatever it is. There is the auto it component here in the script that we can see, and you can see the entropy levels are quite high. In fact, it is extremely high, which shows that it's either encrypted or encoded, whatever it may be. We've already extracted it though, so that's fine. While this is running, I'm going to go ahead and open a tool that might be a little bit faster called PE Bear. And what I want to do is just get a bit of an idea on imported and exported. APIs. So with the imports, there seems to be a large number of DLLs that are being used. And perhaps there are, so there is this virtual, this open process, this virtual alloc X, this right process memory. So immediately it looks like it's going to be doing some sort of injection. How about we swap to dynamic analysis for the time being and actually get a bit more of an idea on what occurs when we run it. Let's fire up Brock Mon. Okay. We want to add a filter for this particular executable name. So we're going to copy this. We're going to add that filter. Apply it. There we go. So now we should only see events that are tied to that. We'll just double check back in on PE Studio. And yeah, you can see that uh, there's a lot more information coming through. The imports, we could filter by technique. And we can see, okay, there's process discovery, there's input capture and process injection like we saw before. So there's quite a large 
chance that this is injecting into a particular process, in which case that's what I'm looking for. I don't care about some of the other stuff that's taking place. I just want to know what's going to wind up in memory at the end. So let's execute this binary. I've just gone ahead and run it. We can see exactly what it's doing. We can see it's running. Cool. We're tracking it. It looks like it is running. It is sitting in memory at the moment. It's likely injected into it. We can see everything that it did with Procmon and we can kind of just base it off of the 7,000 events. I'm sure that's not going to be much to, uh, to look through. Interestingly, this looks like it is opening up Ultra VNC uh, or checking if it is present. Sorry. So likely that is some sort of stealing credentials associated with Ultra VNC. It does look like there is looking for Discord as well. So maybe this is a credential harvester, some sort of information stealer. It's currently still running in memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to open up PE save. The process we are looking for is 2288. Let's just see whether we find anything. And we've found 11 suspicious components of that particular binary that's sitting in memory. We've dumped it out. So it says that there is six implanted shell codes and two implanted PE files and a few hooks that have gone on. So that's interesting. So what we can do now, we can actually terminate this process. We'll terminate the tree, it doesn't really matter. It seems to be the only thing that started running. Yeah, it seems kind of like, okay, it did start a, another child process of itself, probably to inject into, but it looks like that was the only process that was running where something was sitting in memory. So let's go back to our filter. What I'm going to do is uh, remove that so we get it all back. You can see it is loading particular DLLs. Yeah, cool. Kind of looks like it's just trying to in inject into that particular process memory. So let's take a look at this binary now that we've dumped out of memory and pay no attention to the fact that I completely didn't monitor anything with API monitor. So let's take a look. We dumped it uh, to the same direction that we actually fired up PEC from, which is this particular directory. It looks like we've got two applications. We do have this part of memory and we do have this part of memory. One is slightly bigger than the other. So yeah, these executables we can look into further. Let's take a look at detected easy. Uh, this looks like it's .NET now, detected easy with this one. This one looks like it's done possibly with C++, possibly with .NET, or a resource inside of it is too. A little bit interesting. Let's open up DNSpy and just see if we can actually decompile these two particular binaries. So it looks like there's a couple here. This seems to be a PE file defined, but it doesn't seem to have any content noted. So this is probably not of interest to us. Uh, this one on the other hand does seem to have a particular class or multiple classes defined. So we can actually go in and take a look at it and what it's doing. So first thing I want to do is basically just go to the entry point because this is a PE file and it looks like it does have stuff to do with network communication due to the TLS information being defined here. Let's go back anyway. So we've got application run, but we do have these other particular classes. So this one is defined here. This method is run here. And it looks like there's a, a lot more methods that are being executed in this particular function. So there is this screen logger. That's of interest to me. And there is a method inside of that. Looks like it's got log timer. Sure. So there is also an, a key logger here mentioned. So naturally, this is something. Okay, so keyboard hook. So there's probably some sort of Key, key logging going on through basically hooking and determining if any keys are pushed. We've got uh, set module window hook X, and we do have the definitions here. So this is a good sign that there is some sort of key logging going on. So this is to determine whether particular keys are down, up, or particular special keys are pressed on a keyboard and what they refer to. And if we go down, we can see stuff like this key log text. Whoops, I just clicked on that. Let's pivot back ends with and then there's a break or a header so this looks like it's producing some sort of html nice format of the particular key logging that has gone on and you can see page up f5 f6 all these other things being defined here as well so we know this is a particular information stealer particular key logger and the overarching consensus is that this is a version of agent tesla so if we were to you can, see copied, you can see copied text here as well. So it probably has a nice little uh, window. And there's endless amounts of methods that we could actually dive into to essentially see what this is doing. I do believe that it has some 
anti kind of VM checks, anti analysis checks associated with it. But because it is .NET and we've been able to deobfuscate and dump it directly from memory, we can begin to analyze the methods however we see fit. And for example, if we look at this particular class here, we can see mention of a chat ID. We can see kind of the text HTML that's been defined as well as a JPEG image likely that's been taken of the particular operating system in question. And it seems to be using the Telegram API to send this information off to a Telegram channel. In particular, this Telegram channel here via this bot ID and authentication material. There is a chat ID mentioned here as well. And this is where everything that's being stolen is being sent to. There also seems to be a startup environment name here. So we're talking about the app data directory and there is a directory name of whatever that's called. And there is a registry key name and startup installation name. You can also see it does have a forgified user agent string. So this is pretending that it is version 99 of Firefox that's being used to communicate on a Windows operating system, specifically Windows 10 64 bit. And it is also using api.ipfi, which is a legitimate public website that is used to get your publicly facing IP address. Kind of interesting. So there is the username slash computer name, which is being used to send off that particular information associated with the computer. Looks like there is even stuff to do with where assemblies will be executed and the startup full path as well. So it does look like the startup directory path is being specified. And maybe this is the configuration of Agent Tesla. So it didn't actually specify your startup directory. And as a result, it's not essentially setting up persistence in that particular way. But we could also run a tool like auto runs to see if it has established persistence on the operating system as well doesn't seem like there is anything at the moment. So it is quite possible that if it isn't able to communicate with its command and control server, that it just doesn't establish any kind of persistence, but I have no idea. We know that it is a copy of Agent Tesla based on hit Yara rules now. And so we can understand what it is doing based on the behavior of Agent Tesla. And if we look at some other classes, we can see obvious evidence that this is performing some sort of key logging and stealing of passwords. In this particular case, it looks like it is stealing origin, username, and password, maybe stuff from the Opera browser and local state. So this is more possibly to do with Firefox, or maybe this is still Opera. I'm not 100% sure to be honest, but stealing stuff from particular browsers seems to be the aim of the game here. So there is login data here now as well and profile. All these things are associated with browser credentials and cookies. There is also these looks at particular DLLs. Yeah, so we've got Kihu 360 Sandbox, Sandboxy, Avast Antivirus, uh, Avast as a whole, and Komodo Internet kind of commonly known DLLs associated with those security products. And there is looks here as well. So you can see that it is checking to see if the manufacturer is the Microsoft Corporation and whether the particular model is noted as virtual. So if this is operating in a virtual environment, the same is mentioned here for stuff like VMware or VirtualBox. So if it's operating in those particular things, the malware wants to know about it. It is also looking at the video controllers to see if this contains VMware or VirtualBox as well. So this definitely wants to know. And then there's also this check remote debugger present. So it definitely wants to do some sort of anti-debugging and anti-virtualization checks to avoid detection on an endpoint. But we know it is Agent Tesla, so GG. And uh, that's it for today. You can, uh, you can take a look at the in-depth functions of this at your own leisure. So let me know your thoughts, comments, feelings, anything else that you want to say in the uh, comments section below, and I'll catch you next time.